Jeeves. Paul has to say, so I'm going to start sharing. Actually, let me do an introduction. So I'd like to welcome Paul Essek, Captain Paul Essek. His military career spanned 25 years, during which time he was a Navy pilot, squadron commander, joint staff action officer, Navy staff requirements officer, and the assistant chief of Naval Research. After his military career, he became a successful business development executive for defense industrial base and manufacturing companies, and is now a small business consultant and program manager for several Navy support contracts. His experience provides first person insight into the types of people one can expect to meet at defense related conferences and events, the warfighter, the government acquisition related professional and system integrators. So I wanted to welcome Paul, Captain Paul Essig to speak. And can everybody see the slides? Yep. Okay, great. Thank you. And so thank you so much for sharing your insights, Paul. Take it away. Sure. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so I am Paul Essig. I was a business consultant with the Navy's SBR, STTR transition program, or the STP. Uh, in my careers, I was a Navy pilot and a requirements officer in the Navy staff. I was the assistant chief at ONR and a BD executive. And those provide me differing perspectives of networking at defense related conventions or symposiums. And I've networked at these type of events for decades in my roles as a military operator uh, in an acquisition command or while working for defense contractors. So these are the three broad categories of people you engage with at these events, operators, acquisition professionals, defense contractors. And they all have a role in procuring products and services for the Department of Defense. And understanding what each role is will help you frame the discussion you have with the event attendees. So next slide, please. So you all are brilliant technicians, engineers, scientists, entrepreneurs, business people. Your customer, they may not be. They have different motivators, different goals, different priorities. They look at investment differently than you do or the way a VC or an angel does. So this discussion is intended to provide you some understanding of the types of contacts you can expect to meet and insight into their careabouts so that you can drive a conversation in a manner that meets your mutual needs. So your priority when networking at events such as these, to state the obvious, is to grow the business. Defense conferences and symposiums that provide excellent opportunities to increase your understanding of current and future customers' needs, as well as meet existing and new customers and partners. It's also an excellent place to gain competitive intel, but be aware that goes both ways. But to maximize the effectiveness of attending or presenting at these events, takes preparations. Now we've all done it. We've all shown up at these events and think we'll wing it. By doing so, you miss opportunities to meet the organizations and people that can impact your growth the most. Next, please. So we're going to go over ways to prepare for the event how to execute during the event in a way that continues the relationship with customers even after the event ends and activities to do post-event. So as I'm Navy and my current position focuses on the Naval service, the outline is formatted like you would when getting underway, sailing to your mission and returning. When you get sailing orders, you hold a pre-sale conference. When the team gets together, roles are described and assigned. Then you would get the sea and anchor detail. The team is in position and ready to get underway. Once underway, you steam to your objective and carry out your mission. At the completion of the mission, you return to port, taking advantage of that time to set up your next steps. And once pier side, you debrief the entire evolution, picking up lessons learned for the next event. Now, this brief was originally developed for the Navy SBR CTR transition program. If you have a phase two Navy SIBR or STTR and you're invited to join that program, 
I highly encourage it. You will develop PAO approved marketing products, exposure at a forum for SBR and SDTR transition. You receive a business consultant, a market research analysis report, webinars to increase your understanding of the DOD acquisition program and gain additional resources you may use to develop campaign capture or contact plans. Next slide, please. Successful networking at an event requires preparation, execution, and follow-up. Uh, pardon me. My normally silky smooth voice was subsumed by a frog this morning, so we'll see how this goes. <clears throat> so successful networking at an event requires preparation execution and follow-up. I know that's kind of a Captain Obvious comment, but it bears saying, as preparation falls by the wayside, as you feel you need to prioritize other projects. So in order to justify an increase in prioritizing your preparation, remember, these events, more than any other activity, provide you the prospect to successfully expand your network and business opportunities. By preparing, you should maximize the return on the resources you're devoting in time, talent, and travel. If you've been invited by the Navy to join the SBR transition program, you would use your business consultant and market research analysis report to reduce your preparation workload. If you're a previous participant, dust off the old market report for any information that's still current or relevant. Then look at the event website, familiarize yourself with the event, and we'll go over more of that on the next slide. Ask yourself, how can this event assist with capture planning? Is there info you need for your opportunities? For example, do you need to ask the customer on expected RFP timeframes? Is there a requirement you need more info on? Are, you, uh, are there primes you are targeting to join? What questions should you ask them? Prepare your contact plan and list of capture information you need before the event. Hopefully as a company, you've developed a marketing plan or campaign plan, or if you're going after a specific opportunity, a capture plan. You should already know your customer hot buttons. Refresh yourself. If you've had program meetings with your customer, which you should have if you're executing an SBRs to TR, review those notes. You should be following your customers and potential customers on social media. Review their sites and postings. Know your qualifications and certifications. Are you an AS9100 or CMMI, etc.? Have that info ready should a prime ask that. Calls and search may influence your determination as a qualified supplier. And some contracts specify calls and certs. Research your customer's problems, the ultimate customer and the platform primes. Understand your value to them from their perspective. And research your competitors. Black hat them to determine how your product or service could be of more value than theirs. Then validate that with information after talking to them at the event. If you have teammates that are going to be there, Determine information you need from them or want to know about them. If you have an NDA or TA with them, swap intel and validate your information. Have a list of contract vehicles you have available to you. That's a handy piece of info when talking to the government customer. And discriminators, a discriminator is not just a strength. A lot of companies have strengths. It's something that sets you apart. What can you do that no one else can? What makes you special, unique? And most importantly, how does your discriminator bring unique value to the customer? What do you wish to convey about your company in a sentence or two? Get it down pat in your mind so you can state it smoothly. 
Make sure your team, both at the event and those supporting you from home, have all the info. Reach back can be critical. Use your social media campaign. Get your company out there. Let people know that you're going to be at the event. Get your potential customers to associate their needs with your company. You should be following your customers on social media. Look at what they're saying. Um, and all of you could be following the STP and FST on social media. That will broaden your teaming and competitive exposure and assist with determining the voice of the customer. Next slide, please. So the event's website has information you can use to plan your time at the event. And it shocks me how few attendees don't use the event website as part of their planning. Uh, here I provided, uh, as an example, the Sea Air Space floor plan. The Sea Air Space is among the best conference to attend if you're doing business with the Navy. We'll go to the floor plan. Um, look at the map, and there's usually a search function to find contacts of interest. Here I typed in cyber. Um, it's a keyword, and it came up with several potential targets. It's not the ultimate in finding your targets, but it is a start. Study exhibitor list. These events are ripe with teammates and competitors, so get up to speed on them. Your marketing or campaign plans may have listed them. Review open source data on them. What interactions have you had with them? Look over your notes if you took, took them during previous meetings. When using the exhibitor listing and break up your contacts into categories, typically a government or DOD, and then system integrators and subsystem suppliers. This way you can prioritize before the event on booths you wish to visit. And get the booth locations. So that way you won't waste time you know, wandering around looking for your targets and invite your targets. Use personal emails, phone calls. If you don't see a target on the exhibitor list, invite them anyway. They may be attending, attending the event. Also, let them know you're at the event. Uh, in the invite, you can provide a link to any demos or videos you may have that would be of interest to the target. Several of the speakers and topics may be of interest to you. Uh, and if it's early, Speakers may have been invited, but not confirmed. That's pretty normal. Check it periodically as they will update confirmed speakers. Next slide, please. All right, you've done your research and preparation and you're at the show. Whether you're at a table, walking the floor or listening to a keynote speech, Make yourself look open, available, and willing to talk. Be welcoming and confident. If you're standing around, head down on your phone, ignoring potential contacts, it's easy for those contacts to ignore you right back. Focus on your target list. That will help you frame the discussion in the category of person you are talking to. And we'll talk more about this on the next slide. As part of your preparation, you determine the messages you want to convey about your company and know what you need to discuss with your customer. Have those messages and questions ready at all times so that when the opportunity presents itself, you provide your message and gather information. Preparation is key. Making these up on the fly will make you look unprofessional and indecisive. Exude confidence and energy in everything you say and do. Customers aren't just buying technology. They're buying your ability to run programs that provide the technology. Gain and give intelligence. When you meet a potential customer, they're going to want to know who they're talking to, including your position of influence in the company and relative to the technology. It sounds obvious to give them your name and position, company name, and a very quick description of the company's offerings, yet so few do it. But quid pro, quid pro quo, get the same from them, their position and organization, and ask for it if it's not readily provided. It's important to understand what category of customer you're talking to. Is it a government acquisition professional, a system integrator, business developer, or program manager? Is it another small business? 
You're meant, you'll meet many people who are not on your contact plan. After you meet them, look them up. Do you do due diligence after meeting with contacts? Now, government employees are notorious for not having business cards with them. If you don't get a card, make sure you get their contact information. Even if all you get is their name and organization, perhaps the other information can be found by other means like social media, or for those who participate in the STP, an org chart in the STP reference library. Next slide, please. On the last slide, I said, get the information. It's important to understand what category of customer they are. And you're gonna find the three basic groups in attendance. Acquisition professionals are all about cost, schedule, and performance. And they're really concerned with second and third order effects of your technology on cost, schedule, and performance. So is your offering going to be a drop-in replacement? Or do they have to consider hardware and software changes? You know, what do they have to account for? What's the impact to a cyber or information assurance plan? What's the new logistics footprint? Is it open or proprietary information? And how much will it cost them in the future? You won't be able to address these in a quick discussion, but address a few of these concerns so he or she gets that you're cognizant of these effects. And that may drive them to seek more information from you. Use that to get a tasker from them, which leads to a follow-up meeting. Fleet feedback is your best source of information on pending requirements, and their views will be based on their experiences. Ship drivers operate in a three domain threat environment that is highly corrosive. Despite the tough environment, they don't get nearly enough training and maintenance or operations. They want tough, reliable, easy to use and maintain systems. Submariners, well, imagine being in a steel tube 100 meters underwater, and you can sympathize that they have very conservative, solid engineering standards. And aviators were generally less conservative and wanted to try new things. Most fleet operators will not want solutions that induce risk, but they do want it now. System integrators, in the short term, their motivation is to keep the customers happy so they can make money. If one of their products has a problem, they'll be looking for a solution that has the least impact on cost, schedule, and performance. Cost and schedule become critically important if they own a fixed price contract. The people you meet at this conference will likely not be the making decisions then to incorporate your technology, but they are there to search for solutions to take back to their various programs. The question they must answer to their supervisors is, what's the impact to EBIT to make it or buy a solution? This drives their make-buy decision. If it's going to cost them more in time and money to make it in-house, then you have an advantage. And by the very nature of SBR funding, the voice of customer is revealed. Since their customer in the Navy is funding you, the Navy also sets small business quotas and contracts. Use that to your advantage. In the longer term, they're looking for teammates that provide discriminators to the customer. What can your offering do to drive down cost and schedule while maintaining or increasing performance? Any good business development professional is looking for the voice of the customer. And nothing says it better than the government putting money into a technology. Sivers are the voice of the customer. Now, you, you may have insights into future requirements of your technology a prime may not have. Guard that, but use it to your advantage. Also convey a sense of confidence in your ability to support a larger production effort. This is where certifications and qualifications, as well as understanding of, of your facilities, are of value. Next slide, please. Uh, even though it might be obvious, it bears stating. 
you're at a conference, so be there. How many folks take the time and resources to go to an event and then end up in their hotel room doing work? That's a tremendous opportunity cost. Um, when you prepare, make sure you get comfortable broken in shoes. You will need them. You'll be walking and standing a lot. If you're so inclined, socialize. Uh, the bar is an excellent place to network and perhaps have some fun in moderation. Don't be that person who can't handle their liquor, especially with customers. Have some discipline. And make sure you schedule and sleep. One of the things about exhibitors attending a conference is their morning and evening wrap-ups. You'll observe at the big box booths, uh, the large corporations, their personnel will gather around in the morning and, the, and as, their, uh, at, as the event ends for the day. Those wrap-ups are for them to show how they provided value during the day. That would include finding a solution from a small business. So when you're talking to a representative from a system integrator, Give them what they need to discuss your company at the wrap-ups. Maybe they can't use your technology, but another person in the company can. If you had a good discussion with one of them, they will likely be beating their own drum about how they found a technical solution the company can use. And that's free networking for you. Next slide, please. Hedging your bets is a turnoff. It's okay not to know an answer, but state it in a manner that drives a follow-up conversation and offer to provide more information at a later time. Also be clear about what the fin final solutions will be, not the solution at the end of phase two. If at the end of phase two, your solution weighs 200 pounds, but when you transition it will weigh eight pounds, state that. In the grand scheme of things, the customer isn't all that interested about TRL-6. They care about what they can get as a result of your work. The goal is to get the person of interest you are talking with to ask for, or you volunteer to provide them, a follow-up action. That drives continuing the relationship, gets you contact information, and provides increased awareness of customer needs. You increase the likelihood of continuing the relationship by being excited about your technology and your company. It's contagious. And seriously, enjoy yourself while you're there. Next slide, please. So you piqued their interest and they want to hear more about your technology. Get an action from them. Get them to request more information or a meeting. Hit them with that one Thing that's most important in a sentence or less. Provide your card, your brochure if you have one. If you're in the STP, show them your profile on the virtual transition marketplace or, and put the VTM on your, own, on your own device. Show yourself enthusiastic, eager, available, and excited for follow-on discussions. Inform them of how they get a hold of you. Make accessibility easy and show how responsive you can be. Continue to build the relationships with your customers and partners, the whole purpose of which is to get further business. Next slide, please. So immediate actions are complete and you have a few quiet moments. Time for some battle damage assessment. Evaluate the interaction. Get objective critiques from your coworkers if they're present and yourself what was good and what was bad, then apply the lessons and adapt. Nearly immediate follow-ups are important. Email or phone calls on the contacts you made even that evening or the following morning or the first or second day after returning home from travel while your discussion is still fresh in the contact's mind. Use the contacts you made to adapt, update your contact and capture plans. Then start planning your next actions. If you don't get responses, that can be frustrating, but keep at it, either with the original contact or tangent ones that you met. Next slide, please. During your follow-up discussions, 
whether it be sitting down with a customer at the event or after, is where you can get deep about your technology and company. If you're talking with an acquisition professional, discuss how you make the PM's life easy. Be able to discuss contract vehicles you have and ask their advice on which ones you should be on. Will they use OTAs? Can a purchase order suffice? In the Pentagon, money in motion is money at risk and increases the PM's workload. So the easier he or she can get funds to you increases the likelihood they'll do so. OEMs have alternative means to issue funding. They can even use POs if the contract allows, but be aware. The customer may be leveling conditions to the prime who then flows it to the subs and usually they are more restrictive than from the customer. So if, if you aren't a qualified supplier to the OEM, ask how to be one. Be prepared to discuss ISO qualifications, general T's and C's, and find out what it takes to be a qualified supplier. Many large companies have websites that describe the process and where you can apply. If you're interested in a particular company, start looking at those sites. Fleet guys can give you feedback on requirements what they've seen that's good or bad. But I caution you, do not take that as the definitive word. That comes in solicitations. But fleet input can be useful information that you can use to influence your approach, or if you're really good, use that information to influence requirements generations at a later date, like during an RFI or an approved proposal discussions with the customer. And we've said it a few times during this webinar, but it is vital to leave customer interactions with a follow-up action. It provides a reason to maintain contact and further your relationship with them. Next slide, please. Empathy. I don't mean some warm, fuzzy feeling. I mean, put yourselves in their shoes and use that to your advantage. As much as you'd like it to, RFPs aren't written to feed your needs. Network to understand customer requirements. This helps you develop your technology to best win opportunities. I don't care how good your technology is, if you don't have growing relationships and you aren't growing your network, you're at a distinct disadvantage. And lastly, it's your stuff. Be excited about your products and company. It's infectious. And I'll take questions. Great. Thank you so much, Paul. Great. Um, does anybody have any questions for Paul? Open it up. Okay, put them in the chat or turn your mic on. Actually, I had a question for Paul. <laughs> so it was recommended to us to ask our companies to put together a quad chart for potential customers to kind of get a brief overview. Like, would you recommend that? Or what kind of uh, leave behind would you recommend? Uh, quad chart's a, a good one. Um, I like the trifold brochure. Uh, they're easy to fit in your pockets. Um, you can carry them around. You want, you want to have something you don't want to have, keep your hands on. So uh, a, a trifold is a good one uh, that you can put in your suit pocket or your or your uh, other pockets. Um, those are... Uh, those are good quad charts are good to a little more detailed and they would be more oppor opportunity specific or, pro or project specific. Um, so, uh, you know, if you're, if you're really emphasizing one, um, you know, one project, uh, you can bring that quad or, or a couple copies of that quad. You'll end up either carrying around in a, in a folder with you. Um, and then if you have a couple projects, you can bring a couple quads, but those are little, those are a lot more detailed. And um, and specific. So it depends on what you're going for. If you're only going there for one opportunity, then I would bring that. If you're going there for a broader thing, those are okay to bring, but I, I would bring a trifold. It just it's just easier to hand out. And it's also if if you can stick it in your pocket, that means your person you're giving it to can stick it in their pocket, which means it's less likely for them to throw it out. 
And the trifold would just be like a general overview of everything your company does? Yeah, a, a, a brochure for your company. Okay. Uh, just a trifold, simple one. And then do you have any recommendations on how to make the best of one-on-ones? Yeah. Um, first of all, make sure you're maintaining eye contact. That's a big one. Um, it's um, nothing. Someone's talking to me and they don't want to look at me. I'm like, what? You know, <laughs> what, I got a fly on my nose. Um, so maintain eye contact. Um, speak in certainties. Uh, you don't want to say, I think, or I know, you know, it might, or something like that. You really want to talk about, you know, being certain. Um, keep your qualifiers to, to a minimum. Um, and if you do qualify something, um, Make sure that you say, hey, but I can get you more information later. Again, driving that follow-up interaction. Um, uh, show certainty. When you're doing a one-on-one, -on -one, you can kind of gauge from their body language, you know, do they, do they have to be somewhere else? And so they're not going to pay attention to you uh, if you go detail. So what you want to do uh, is, you know, make sure you get that. That's why it's important to practice before you get there, that one-liner about what it is you're trying to do. And this is where, knowing your customers care about is important because you got want to get that, that one line zinger out there. Uh, so that they remember that because everything after that, they're kind of like, you know, maybe we can do another meeting later. So it's really important to be direct, be clear and have that one liner ready and know what it is that your customer really cares about. So if you do that, um, then you can, you know, once that happens and then you can see from his body language, He's, he's still interested, he or she is still interested, then you can continue down the road for a more detailed discussion. Um, if, you're, if you're scheduling a one-liner or a, a one if you've got a scheduled one-on-one -on -one for you know half hour, or whatever, um, when you're building that brief, uh, less words on the slide is more. Uh, let them take their notes on the slides but if you fill up a slide with a bunch of words, you know, how many PowerPoints have we seen that look like Word documents? They're just filled with words. Well, no one's going to read those because um, your customer has probably got a million things to do at this at this at the conference. So you really want to make a make your uh, presentation something that sticks in his head. So when you start to get into really detailed stuff, you know whether he remembers or not is up is up for grabs. But if you're hitting his needs and his care abouts. Um, then he's going to remember, chances are he's going to remember it more. Now, when you get a one-on-one -on -one with a, with maybe a, a program manager or a technical point of contact, that's where you really want to have your technology, you know, down pat, real savvy on what it is your technology is doing, because they're going to be much more interested in that. Um, but at a conference like this, you're having a one-on-one, -on -one, remember you're talking to, most likely it's going to be a business developer, his technical gravitas is questionable at best. Um, and so you really want, really want to go after what are his requirements, what are his needs? Um, they're, uh, you know, whether you're using, you know, brass screws versus steel screws, you know, he's just not going to care. Someone will later, but he's not. So um, gauge, gauge what level of detail you want to go into. Go after what he's, his requirements. Well, the, the real thing is, and I mentioned this, is the make-buy decision. you got to drive that make-buy decision in your favor. You want them to buy it from you instead of make it in-house. Um, and so, you know, the, if you have a proprietary manufacturing process that drives the cost of manufacturing down by 50%, you, that's, that's the case you got to make to them, that it's going to be cheaper for them just to buy it from you and be a, be a supplier. Okay. And then the research is what is going to tell you what level of person that you're talking to and like what, yeah. where they are at the decision-making process. Yeah. When you're, when you're introducing yourself, that's what it's important to understand where they are in their organization, just as it's important for them to understand where you are in your organization. So if they're a, if they're a prime contractor and he's a, a, a director of business development, you know, you want to, you want to put your, uh, Drive the discussion towards that that make buy decision. Um, hopefully, you understand their care abouts. Like uh, for example, the F thirty five 
if you, if you look at open source information, the F-35 costs are driving the DOD nuts. So when you're talking to a Lockheed Martin or Northrop Grumman or Raytheon, all of whom are, are big suppliers, even though Lockheed's the prime, Northrop Grumman has more content on that aircraft. So when you're talking to these, these other, the prime and then their big subcontractors, you want to show them how you can drive the costs down. Um, and that it's, you know, you, you're the only one that can do that. That's your discriminator. Um, that's a hot button and that's an open source hot button if you're, if you're paying attention to your industry. So, um, so you know that that's something you have to talk to them about, how they're going to drive their costs down. So th that's just an example of one of those. Um, does anybody else have any questions? No? Oh, hi, Gloria. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks, thanks for this. Um, and thanks, Paul. This, is, this was a really great um, speaker series. I, I enjoyed all the slides, and I definitely took a lot of notes. One of the things that I wish was that I had this before the post conference, which is the <laughs> science and technology conference that um, Cindy and I had both attended with Wayne. And one of the things that I was curious if you might have any tips on trying to navigate titles um, and program offices. I know the Navy is really huge. So I, I'd imagine it'd be hard to find that one-stop shop platform or network or, or, I mean, online website. Do you have any tips on someone who is new within the DOD space on how to navigate through those different types of um, people and that way they can identify the three folks that you had just mentioned in your introduction slides. I'm sure. Um, excuse me. Um, the Defense Innovation Marketplace is a good website to go to um, for some, some context. Um, the communities of interest in there, they'll, they'll list some of their, their points of context. Uh, there's they keep changing the number of, of uh, COIs, communities of interest. Um, but, you know, those quads usually have points of contact, there's some points of contacts on them. Um, ONR's website, if you're doing, want to do business with ONR, uh, they have some pretty good contact information on there. Um, it's, uh, it's relatively accurate. Um, last time I went through it, I only saw a few people that weren't there anymore. So that's one place to go. Um, but I think the defense innovation marketplace was was developed for small businesses uh, to uh, to gain information uh, about their customers. Um, so the specific systems commands have have very their websites are a varying uh, goodness, I guess you could say. Navair, if you want to do business with Navair, that's a pretty good website. Um, they, they do have their they do have at least they tell you who you know, who the PMs are, which is a, which is something. Um, uh, if you go to, if you do want to work with Navair, I highly recommend you look up the Patuxent Partnership. Uh, it's Patuxent, it's paxpartnership.org or something like that. Um, the Patuxent Partnership, uh, they're a group of mostly small businesses that share a lot of information. They have uh, events, uh, some, most of them are virtual. Um, that you can go to. Uh, but like NAVC's website, it's it's hard to get any good information off NAVC's website. It just people aren't there, uh, points of contact. So um, STP participants, if, there's lots of great information in the reference library, but you have to have been a member. But once you are a member of the STP, you can you know, you continue to have access to that reference library. So if you get a phase two with the Navy, uh, you'll be invited to that program, and it's 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 worth it just to do that. Um, there's uh, each of the syscoms has to put out what's called a long range acquisition forecast or LRAF that's mandated by Congress. Uh, so you can look those up uh, by syscom. Um, and each of the each of the syscoms has a small business office. So I would just at a last or as a resort, you could go contact the uh, small business office. And they also have SBIR offices on each one um, and talk to them about who they should be talking to. So um, those are probably some of your, some of your easier uh, resources you can go to. 
Awesome, thank you. Sure. Gloria. Anybody else have any questions? Gloria, I, I did not get to give you a proper introduction. Did you want to mention anything about your programs? This is Gloria Chu with Ensign and the university? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Steve had um, did an intro uh, on part of his office um, in the Office of Innovation Commercialization. So the post conference that we had went to, we have um, attended, I think was in March, um, had a lot to do with um, trying to help small businesses within the national security space um, gain resources and you know the programs that we have around um, trying to allow them to have more access. Um, so we are a DOD program within the Undersecretary of Defense for Research and Engineering and I'm embedded here at UH Manoa um, and then also just working with HTBC and, and uh, Naval X Tech Bridge is part of all of our activities. Thanks Cindy. Thanks Shada. Thanks Gloria. Uh, any last questions? No? Okay, I have one last question for Paul before we let you go. <laughs> what is, I know you've attended a ton of these conferences. What is your favorite tchotchke that you got from the conference? What is your favorite tchotchke? You know all those giveaways that companies oh. have? <laughs> Sorry, we call it Gidunk. Gidunk? Gidunk. I've never heard of that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Geez, well, depends on how rich the company is, I guess. The uh, one of them was handing out folding chairs; the other one was handing out coolers. Wow! Um, yeah, awesome. so they were pretty big. Um, uh, one one company was handing out. It's a stupid little thing. I think I have it around here somewhere. It was like a wine. It was like a. It was a robotics company, so they were handing out little mini robots. Huh. But of course, you had to shake them, and then they just kind of walk around the place for a while. So that was pretty cool. The kids really loved that one. Um, so the, that's probably my best ones. That's good, something memorable. It's always, it's always hard to decide if you're going to try and get something to give away. It's like, yeah, there's so much out there, but okay. Yep. That's great. And I really appreciate you taking the time, even though your throat is kind of giving you some grief, but thank you. Thank you so much. That was just really useful. Um, we're going to have this recording and we'll send it out to our participants for your reference. And then is it okay if I send out your slide deck as well? Absolutely. And I will um, I will um, send you my notes, my speaking notes. That would be awesome.